Hi, welcome back. In today's session, we will speak about something quite interesting in computational mechanics, which is the deformation gradient and how to compute this using peridynamic equations. So if you have not subscribed yet to the channel so far, I would invite you to do so in order to be updated with the latest news. Please just click on the link here below. All right, so let's get started. So in last session, we said that the deformation gradient is a um, mapping from one configuration, the initial configuration of a body, into the deformed configuration of a body. And this is done using a function called the deformation gradient, which is widely employed in classical continuum mechanics. And once you have this deformation gradient, you're able to compute all different kind of strains that we employed in classical continuum mechanics and eventually stresses which are widely uh, popular and employed but what about peridynamics do we how do we compute this deformation gradient and more importantly do we actually need this deformation gradient well the truth is that there are actually no computed strains in peridynamics. I mean, you don't actually need to compute strains because peri the peridynamics formulation is trying to avoid the continuity, the assumption of the continuity in the displacement field as it is required by classical mechanics. So, you don't really need to compute a deformation gradient f because you are actually working with the true displacements however you can that doesn't mean that you can you cannot compute the deformation gradient because in fact you can and this is something that sometimes it's useful because in this way you can combine um, classical material models with peridynamics and see how they work together and what are the similarities and i'm not going to go a very very deep into this but i just want to leave you here uh, for this session at least the expressions how to compute the deformation gradient using integrals only integrals so and if you have not uh, seen yet this nomenclature of the peridynamics, this underlined, and what does this variable mean? I would suggest at this point to also have a look in my first and second video tutorials about the nomenclature of peridynamics, in which I better define and better explain how these variables uh, and what these variables are. But just a quick review here. Uh, we can immediately from this expression see a dyadic product and this dyadic product as we recall uh, this dyadic product is the multiplication of two vectors y and x and we know that y for instance has three components tan, 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 and the x um, let me put, delete this one here x has another three components in three dimensions of course yes so this result here will be a matrix uh, let's call it a and this matrix because we will be multiplying this component by this then this by this this by this will occupy the first place this by this will occupy the second place. This by this will occupy the third place. This by this will occupy the fourth place. And so on, right? So you will have nine components here on this expression. So this will be a matrix, which will be multiplying another matrix called K, which is also defined as defined in here. So, and from here we can see that the deformation gradient is built using 
this the in the current configuration y of a particular bond let's say this is one bond times the initial configuration of the same bond and then we go to the next bond uh, which we'll call it c2 so we go to this bond which will be multiplying by this bond and so on for every other bond that is going to be formed with all these dots that are inside this radius delta p yes so and see so this is how you will we will actually be able to build the deforma a deformation gradient quantity using peridynamic equations now i would like to show you how the computation of the deformation gradient may actually be done using a peridynamics code so looking at the website here of inside peridigm the open source uh, c++ code for peridynamics we can go here to source var to the source folder and then inside the compute compute uh, folder you will see many many different fields that you can compute using the uh, using this uh, solver in this case for instance the acceleration and so on one of them is actually the one we are looking for which is called the deformation gradient as in here we have the include file and we have the the source file all the functionality in here and here if we go down if we go scroll down here we can see that this is the this is a class uh, this is the, con the constructor which will be initializing in the beginning but more importantly the one that interests us is here compute and here we can see that for every block of the material because our solid will be uh, consisting of several different types of blocks in which uh, in each block you define certain material properties and so on here the important thing you see here the function calling to compute shape tensor inverse and approximate the formation gradient but this belongs here to the class uh, to the namespace and uh, sorry correspondence so where is this namespace and where is exactly this function i'm going to show you now so for that you need to go back here and rather than going to the compute folder we can go here to the materials folder and inside this folder you will see something called a correspondence.cxx so if you click on here and you search for you see the namespace the correspondence namespace so if you search here for the function compute the formation gradient compute shape tensor inverse oh yes that was the one shape tensor inverse and approximate the formation gradient you will see here the function that it's been actually called so the first thing to notice here is that we have two loops one for loop and then this second loop here so the first loop will loop around all each of the particles that my body has so in this case all the particles uh, that are inside this potato right and the second loop will position itself for in each of these particles previously mentioned and it will start looping around all the neighbors that correspond to this particle previously defined so in this case all the dot particles that correspond to the particle p so the second thing to notice here is that we will have we will be building two uh, vectors here one which is defined in peridigm as on the form x and this on the form x is the same as this x here and the second one is the deform which corresponds to the y so if you can see here you have the on the form x which is uh, the 
initial position of the bond, which has, as I said, the three components, x1, x2, and x3. This is the on the form. And then you have also the deform, which is building the y for every, uh, the, which will be corresponding to the current position of the bond. Yes. Which would also have three components. So the y is being measured in this part, whereas the x is measuring, uh, checking the bond position, initial configuration against the bond current configuration. Yeah. So that's why you have three operations here. And then, then you also are computing the omega, which will be measuring the influence that each bond will have when building this deformation gradient. And you can see here immediately that the omega, it's multiplied, let's put aside this bond damage for the moment, and it is being multiplied by the, by the volume of the particle Q, which is this one here, yes? So this one here is temp, right? This temp here. And then we have here the construction of both tensor quantities, which are the shape tensor K and the, deform the first part of the deformation gradient. What is this deform first part of the deformation gradient that is being multiplied by temp? It's actually, as you can see here, it's actually this operation here. So in this case, we can see here that the deform, which is y, is multiplying the on deform, which is x here. Yes. So in, and it is building a quantity called the deformation uh, first term first term yes which is built using y1 time x1 then here y1 times x2 then y1 times x3 and so on for all the rest of the other components in total that's why it will, we will have nine components which is building this operation that i was mentioning here to you yes this deformation gradient first term which is being multiplying multiplied by the temp which is the omega and the volume yeah so this and this you can see here the closing bracket, which indicates that this operation is going to be done for all the bonds inside the neighborhood of the particle P. Yeah. So, in other words, that closing brackets, it's doing, it's performing this operation. Only this for all the bonds that are inside the horizon. Yes, which then as we can see here, it will be multiplied by the shape tensor inverse by this operation here, which is another function which we can go if you want uh, in a minute. Yes, by this shape tensor inverse k minus one. But in the same time, this shape tensor inverse is being also built in the same function. That's why it is called compute the shape tensor inverse and the approximate deformation gradient, yes? So this shape tensor inverse, we can see here that it is also building, uh, it is building this operation here, this tensorial quantity here, uh, as the on the form times the on the form, yeah? So in this case, we have the shape tensor here, sorry, shape, uh, etc will be equal to the, again, another nine components, one, two, three, four, five, and so on, right? Which is multiplying by this temp value, 
which is also the same as was previously defined here. What this operate when it also finishes the same loop as we were mentioning before, it will invert the shape tensor in a variable called shape tensor inverse. So it will it will build this k initially, then it will invert into k minus one, as in here, and then it will multiply it by the deformation gradient first term. So we have the first term and the shape tensor inverse, and this will build this expression, the deformation gradient. And if you're curious about where are these other operations, these other functions which are inverting the matrix and matrix multiplications, you can actually look at them in the same file because you will see here that the inverse matrix it's defined oh yeah in here and you can go through all the steps that it is actually doing to do so and the matrix multiply it's also defined in the same file as in here in line 143 so i hope you uh, I was clear enough by while explaining this part of the code. Uh, the deformation gradient, as I said before, it's not necessary to employ it, compute it in using peridynamics, but it is actually something useful to do, especially when you want to e apply computational models from classical materials, from classical mechanics, sorry, into peridynamics using peridynamics. In the next video, I will show you how to do this uh, i remind you please also subscribe to the channel let me know how you if you like this video or not and give it a like if you did and see you next time all right goodbye